Hi everybody, welcome to my unboxing of the LX Navigation Era 80. Um, this is a uh, high-end uh, navigation system, um, mainly for gliders. Uh, it's intended to um, form a multitude of functions, the first one being the variometer, but also now rather than just doing one single task, it now has the ability to show you height, put tasks uh, in navigate to tasks, show you the wind direction when you're thermaling to be able to show you the best part of the thermal. So it's a full sort of flight computer all, uh, all in one, all in a nice 80 uh, millimeter uh, instrument, which I'll unbox in a second. So down the bottom, I've got all of the uh, serial number and everything in here. Um, this comes in uh, a few variations. The first one is you can get it in 80 or 57 millimeters. Uh, 57 millimetres is a bit small. I think I've got reasonably good eyesight, but not sure how much um, information you'd be able to see on a 57 millimetre one. I suppose if you're just using the Vario only, that might be useful. Uh, it can also be used as a standalone device, which is the one that I've got here, uh, completely standalone with what's called full. So that's got IGC, um, so it's got logging uh, onto it as well. So any competitions or any tasks that you do, um, it actually logs and locks down that data. Um, to be able to confirm that the GPS coordinates are true and you haven't um, made them up. Um, the other thing um, that uh, you can get it in is what's called the light and that doesn't have um, IGC uh, built into it as well. Um, in fairness, I had the light and I've now swapped it for the full. Uh, I've got what's called an UDI, which is a personal digital assistant, so a nice um, sunlight readable screen and that gives me a lot of waypoint and navigation, so it's a much bigger screen. Um, so the, the only challenge with that is sending a task. So I can create a task within my UDI, um, pair it up and then send the task information so it repeats it back onto the ERA. Uh, the problem is because it doesn't handle um, IGC, so uh, data logging, and therefore it won't receive a task and then declare the task back out again. So um, very kindly, uh, LX Navigation have allowed me to trade in my old instrument and just pay the difference. So uh, very good um, on that front from a customer service point of view. And they've enabled me to do this and uh, swap it for that, which is now uh, why I've got the new one. Uh, just going back a bit, the other version as well is you can have a Zeus, which is a built-in large screen, comes in uh, 4.5, I think, 5.5 and 7 inch um, built-in screen. And this can be a slave device, so it can purely show you the Vario and a few other bits of information. But it's basically receiving its information rather than from its own inputs, it's receiving them from the Zeus, which is the master one. So a bit like the UDPDA, which is a one on a cradle that I've got built on, a, on an arm. Um, uh, to the to the right of me that's built into the instrument panel so people could have that as well so uh, without further ado let's um, see what's inside the box it's nicely boxed for a start so what do we have obviously there'll be the instrument in there but there's going to be a lot of other cables and everything in there as well so as we can see nice and neat we've got the uh, era uh, this is actually slightly different to my old one that I sent back. It's got the branding on it for a start, uh, and these these buttons didn't have uh, have anything on them now. So now we've got uh, we've got better labels on them. So uh, that's a positive start. So let's have a look and let's get the uh, the bits out and see what other accessories we have in here. So we have a speaker. So the Vario, when it's doing the beeping noise, has to centre the um, speaker. To be fair, my speaker is already fitted from the old one, so I uh, don't need that. Uh, but uh, I assume you guys will need that. Uh, then we've got a multitude of cables. Now let's have a look. Let's open them up and see what we have in here. Onto there. That's it. Right. So we've got a cable that takes us up straight to the UDI, which is good, so that can communicate. We've got uh, an input, so what you can do with this is you can receive input from lots of different things, so uh, flaps, um, landing gear, um, you can have a, a stick, push button stick, so you can toggle between um, circling mode, uh, you can set it to auto, but also if you want to do your flight um, or whether you want to be in thermally mode, so speed command and lots of other different inputs which trigger and you set in the menu items. 
the other part of the power cable, so the connector that goes into the out of that, and then that runs straight into your battery. Pretty useful, you probably need power. The outside air temperature, I'm not sure when everyone puts it actually outside, but it usually goes inside the glider um, down sort of near the feet or at the back of the panel. Uh, tends to be more or less like that, so it goes out and just measures the ambient temperature, which for us isn't the external air temperature, but um, it's, at least it's giving you that. We've got a, a micro SD card um, which will have uh, all of the uh, information that we'll store onto that. So we need to, uh, there's the adapter, so that's a 16 gig, so maps, uh, turn points. Um, your pilot information, everything, although it temporarily loads it, stores it onto there. Software updates, you can load onto that and then apply any uh, updates via the Alex website. We have the aerial, so the antenna, which goes into the back of the uh, era itself. And then we have the GPS antenna, so that aerial is for Bluetooth and Wi Fi. And uh, this package here is the cable that goes straight into the back of the era, and that is my GPS antenna with a little alcohol wipe with a sticky pad to be able to stick that in a place really where it can see the sky, pick up the signal and know exactly where it is, including altitude and everything. So that's all of those bits. Then we have the era itself. I'll keep it actually still wrapped in here. But that's an 80 millimeter, so uh, that's the cutout. It's going around there, and then those knobs stick through there. So at the back, we then have your uh, instruments. So you've got your uh, static, um, pito, and total energy tubes that are coming through. We then have the Bluetooth and Wi Fi aerial, which is that one. Uh, it bends at 90 degrees, so it can go up or 45, whichever angle that you want to put it in. The GPS um, feed that comes in, and then we've got the SD card. Um, you can get an external SD card. Some people fit it into the instrument panel, but it's already got the SD card at the front, just there. So I uh, don't really need that input. Uh, CAN is the CAN bus. That's their communication protocol, so a little bit like a network cable, um, basically you can plug in any external devices um, into that. So any other LX instruments that talk through, sometimes the Zeus um, or anything else um, to do with that. The FLAM has got its own input into there. So um, if you saw my previous video, which is the traffic monitor, which is this here, which is a FLAM display, what will happen is I've got a red box FLAM, it will send it to the traffic monitor because that traffic monitor has got an in and an out, the out can then go into here, which means I can then scroll through the screens and see exactly the same thing on here if I want to. Uh, mainly I think for traffic warning, the great thing at that point is I'll get a traffic warning coming up on the traffic monitor, but also it will come up on this front screen for me um, as well, so uh, that might be uh, useful. Uh, user, so that's the user input showed you before for these um, that goes in. So I've got what's called the LX Joy, which is joystick with the buttons on top. So things like one of those buttons. Um, so what happens is the that goes into the can, but also into the user. I've got an input which is the push to talk for the radio. So the radio then has the input. So input one and two, I think it is is for me to um, communicate but also to be able to change between mode so one of the buttons has the speed command um, out into numbers one and two and then we set it to one and two that says trigger so when that occurs it will switch between two different modes two different menus on there rather than flicking between the two uh, then we have the uh, inputs, if you said that one, uh, the uh, input, sorry, it was that one. The, uh, we've got the outside air temperature, which is just a small little jack that goes straight into there. And the audio, again, coming from the speaker, it's a 3.5 millimeter jack um, that runs any audio down to somewhere behind the instrument panel. So then you can see, um, you can see, you can hear even, uh, exactly what information is being alerted to you on this. So the Vario, any collision warnings, any um, speed 
um, flap warnings if you've got flaps and you've got the sensor um, plugged in. So um, all nice and neat, uh, looking forward to getting that fitted into my instrument panel as I said, um, connect the battery up and then uh, and then get it all set up and get it programmed. Um, I do know that you can select specific gliders, so it's got all of the settings and everything in, and then you can customize it to say whether you want uh, in imperial metric, configure your own pilot details in there, um, and then also all of these settings. So on the screen, on the front screen, you can choose. So any of those four pieces of information, actually what the bar, um, the meter bar is, so speed to fly, um, you can configure all of those to your uh, your personal preferences and there's two windows where you're in thermaling mode or whether you're in a task mode and you're flying somewhere so again different bits of information can show so it may be the bearing and the distance that you need to show when you're in um, speed but when you're in um, thermaling you may want to show the average thermal um, the uh, ground speed or for the drift um, but also the uh, altitude that you're at or flight level whatever you want to show so uh, looking forward to getting that fitted back into my uh, instrument panel um, and seeing where we go from there so yep yeah, uh, the next video will be posted up um, in a few days time and um, with it fitted in and working um, hopefully with a GPS signal as well so we can see um, and we can set a task and we can show you uh, everything that works on that one so uh, subscribe if you want to be notified of that and any other of the instruments that I've uh, that I've got and I'm going to be getting to my Cirrus glider and uh, see where we go from there any questions any comments post them below and uh, I'll be happy to answer them thanks for watching